Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find polygon with largest perimeter. This is a medium difficulty question, but I think the most important thing you're gonna learn from this problem is how to actually approach it and the thought process that you can use in the future to solve this problem if you weren't able to do so this time. First thing, let's read it. We're given a positive integer array of nums and they give us a couple definitions. Now with these types of definitions, it's kind of complicated. I'll explain it to you. A polygon is at least three sided. You probably remember that from school. And basically what they're saying is the longest side of a polygon, let's say this is what the polygon looked like, is never gonna be longer than the sum of the other side. So in this case, it's just a triangle, but there's no possible way we could ever arrange this such that this guy is longer than the other ones. Because if we try to shrink these, we're going to end up flattening it so much so that eventually those two other sides will actually be just as long. And at that point, it's not really a polygon. It's just two flat lines on top of each other. Now, if you don't care about geometry, it's perfectly fine. You don't really need to know that intuition to solve this problem, but you definitely need to understand one of these, either this one or this one. And I would prefer this one, even though it's more complicated because this makes the code a lot easier to code up. We're already given that N is gonna have at least K elements. So don't need to worry about that. And here they're basically saying that one side is longer than all of the others. That's what they're saying with this first inequality. So that's kind of what I just told you. Here they're saying that the sum of all the other sides is gonna be greater than the longest possible side. So our job is to given a bunch of elements, let's say these are the lengths of each side of the, basically these are just possible candidates for side lengths. We don't necessarily have to include all of them. Our goal is to create a polygon with the largest possible perimeter. If it's not possible, we return negative one. Okay, how do we do that? Immediately, you might think, let's try it greedy because of course, the longest possible length is going to help us create the longest possible perimeter. So for every single one of these elements, let's consider if it were the longest possible side. And if we can sort this array, it'll make this part or, or the first inequality a lot easier for us. Because think about this. We sort the input so it looks like this. These are the side lengths. Now, it would be very easy for us to consider each of these as a candidate, because let's say I want to consider three is the longest possible length. Well, to do that, I know for sure I shouldn't include any other values on the right side. Now, theoretically, it could be possible that actually we have a tie. We have a three over here. It is valid for us to include two threes at the same time, because if you notice this inequality has less than or equal into it, that is valid. So even though when we are over here and suppose there's a three over here, we're not gonna consider the three over here. We're gonna just assume something like this, but eventually our pointer will get to this point so that we do consider this three. And at that point, we'll consider the other three at the same time. So it does work out. Obviously sorting is helpful for the first inequality, but what about the second inequality? We have to make sure that that condition is satisfied as well. We have to ensure that, let's say we're at this candidate, we need to ensure that the sum of all values less than or equal to this, that sum is greater than this particular value. How can we do that? Because if we have to do that for every single candidate, then we're gonna have to loop over all those elements, right? Assume we sorted this in n log n time, and then we're trying to do it this way. For every time we consider this the longest length, we have to sum all the previous elements. That is an n squared solution. But can you figure out how we can optimize that? Do we really need to do that every single time? No, we don't. There's a couple ways we can optimize it. We can do something called prefix sums. I won't go super in depth into this because there's a slightly easier way. But if let's say we wanted to iterate over this, we wanted to maybe be super greedy. We wanted to consider this one first. We want to consider if this is the longest possible length first. And then if that's not valid, then we want to consider this possible as the longest possible length. And we wanted to go in reverse order 
at that point, we would need to compute the prefix sums because otherwise we'll be iterating over the entire thing. We could also, I think, just compute the entire sum of the array, but I think I'm probably getting too far away from the solution that I'm actually going to show you because we are not going to do it that way, even though that is a perfectly valid solution that will be just as efficient as the solution I'm going to show you. Instead of going from right to left, we're going to go left to right because what we'll notice is we can accumulate what the total sum is so far. When we get to this element, what is the sum of all elements to the left? Well, it's gonna be zero. But of course, this doesn't really form a polygon. We do need at least three sides, but the math will work out such that then we get to the next pointer and our total at this point will be set to one. The total is always gonna represent the sum of all previous elements. And so we will be able to accumulate that sum in a variable. Now, the other last point is, let's say we're here. This is a valid polygon because we know we'll have at least three sides, but we do have to ensure one thing. We know that everything here is less than three individually. Each element is less than three, but is the sum of this strictly greater than three? In this case, it's not. So this does not form a polygon. Next, we will try with four as the longest length. And now we'll know that our total is six. Is six strictly greater than four? Yes, it is. So what is the perimeter of this polygon going to be? You tell me. Well, it's probably going to be the sum of all these sides as well as four. So we'll put that in 10. And you might think, well, what if we don't want to include some of these? Like maybe we just don't want to. Maybe we want to include only a couple of them. Well, first of all, all of these are going to be positive. That's guaranteed to us. And why would we ever want to do that? Why would we ever have the choice of including an element? and not doing so. We're trying to maximize the perimeter. Why would you ever not want to include something that you can? Try to be greedy. Take as much as you can. And not only that, by the time we get here, let's say we're maintaining a result variable. By the time we get here and we find that, okay, there is a valid shape here, do you think I need to check, is this greater than the current result? No, of course not. If we found a valid shape here, that means we included all these elements. If we found a valid shape earlier over here, we probably all also included all valid elements, but there's obviously less over here than if we're over here. We have more now. That's why when I was talking about it, the super greedy way, you'd probably want to start from the right and then go left because as soon as you find something that's valid, you can immediately return. But this is the way I'm going to code it up from left to right. The bottleneck is going to be sorting because after sorting, we are just going to do a linear scan. There's no extra data structures needed. So this is the big O time complexity. I guess depending on the sorting algorithm, there might be extra memory needed by the built-in sorting, but we won't really go into that. Okay, so now let's code it up. First thing I'm gonna do is sort the input array. Then I'm gonna initialize the result to negative one actually, because that's what they want us to return as the default value. And the last thing I'm gonna declare before we start iterating through the loop is that total variable that we're gonna be keeping track of. So after that, we just go through every number in the input. We of course want to increment the total, but before we actually do that, remember what we want to know is that the total not including the current n element. So that's why I'm doing this before the following line. We want the total before the current element is greater than the current element. If it is, we can consider this as a result candidate. The result candidate is total plus n. We don't need to take the max of result and this because we're going left to right. If we find one of these, it's of course gonna be greater than the previous one that we found. So we don't need to do that. That would still work, but it's redundant. You don't need max there. So you might think I'm missing something here, but I'm gonna run the code and show you that it actually does work. On the left, you can see it runs and it's pretty efficient, about as efficient as we can get. Now, what exactly did we possibly forget? Well, given that n is gonna have at least three sides, what if we somehow considered a polygon, like the way we started this, we started from the beginning of the array. What if we considered a polygon that had less than three sides? Like let's give an example input of one, one, two or something. Let's say at the first element I get to, maybe I consider this as a polygon. Well, we know for sure it wouldn't ever happen for the first element. It's gonna be positive. And at that point, our total is gonna be zero. The total is never gonna be greater than a positive element. So this would never evaluate for an array by the time we've only gone through one element. Basically, I'm saying, is it possible that our result will end up returning a positive number when the result for this happens to be negative one? Let's try it. 
Let's go to the next element now. Well, at this point, our total is one and our current element is also one. So this is not gonna evaluate for this either. And by the time we get to two, it's also not gonna evaluate because our total would be two. Can you think of a possible example input where we would end up assigning the result to something positive for the first two elements? Because we know that the first element by itself will never give us a result. But what about the first two elements? Can you possibly think of something where that would happen? Of course you can't because the elements are sorted in ascending order. We did that. How would this possibly evaluate to true? Like you'd have to make this a two and then this a one, but that's not possible if we sort the array. So basically you don't have to consider the case. Like we don't have to have an extra if statement here to check. Let's say we had our I pointer. We don't have to ensure that I is greater than or equal to two. You don't need to do that. That's redundant. Another thing, if you had that extra if statement, it wouldn't be bad, but I just wanted to show you why I didn't include it. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.